Bitcoin has only just performed its last pre-halving retrace, transitioning into the reaccumulation period, which is currently what we're seeing right now. We're seeing sideways consolidation as part of reaccumulation. So how long is this reaccumulation range going to last? We're going to look at 2020 as well as 2016 to better understand these reaccumulation ranges that form around the halving. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward and let's dive right into it. So we know we're in a transitional phase from the last pre-halving retrace where we saw 18% pullback in March and a 18% pullback also this April. And that pre-halving retrace is playing into the reaccumulation phase, which we're seeing right now. 70K, roughly speaking, is the range high resistance. 6,600 is the range low support. And so we're just consolidating here and reaccumulating before the next rally towards the upside, which is this green post halving parabolic upside phase where we see the most gains in Bitcoin's market cap and also we see higher prices for Bitcoin. But it's this reaccumulation phase that precedes that parabolic run up. And it's this reaccumulation phase that tends to be the home for sideways price action for Bitcoin. And it starts off with that pre halving retrace phase. The pre halving retrace tends to build this range. And so we see zigzagging within this range going forward. So if we look at 2020, we see that from the halving until breakout point, it took 160 days for Bitcoin to start and really end its reaccumulation range with a breakout. In 2016, this was a 154-day reaccumulation range before we saw a breakout here. The only difference between 2020 and 2016 in terms of this breakout is that in 2016, we saw a breakout and overextension towards the upside, but then we actually revisited the breakout point right over here. So a few weeks or around the breakout, we saw this act as a resistance and here it acted as a support. So a clear change in psychology within the span of just a few weeks. But nonetheless, 154 days is how long this reaccumulation range lasted. 161 days in 2020. And so if we were to just see if 154 days from 2016 were to repeat, that would get us to around September of this year, where we just see sideways movement in Bitcoin's price action. And if it's 160 days, then that maybe pushes us into late September, maybe even early October, if we were to see a bit more extension in this reaccumulation range by by maybe an additional month, so up to 180 days, that will get us into October. But as as things stand, 150 days seems to be that historical average in terms of how long a reaccumulation range after the halving tends to be. And so 150 days, or well, that's a fair amount of time, that's five months. So five months of reaccumulation may lay ahead if history were to repeat. But we have to also remember that Bitcoin is only just entering its first week in this post halving reaccumulation. So this phase can still last a very long time. So we're only just beginning this reaccumulation phase according to history, but we also have to remember that we've never seen Bitcoin rally to new all-time highs in the pre-halving period. So we know that we're accelerating in this cycle. And I've spoken about this yesterday about the accelerated cycle. So feel free to check that video out. But essentially we are, or at least at the time of the new all-time highs, we were 260 days ahead of schedule because of this sideways movement that we've seen for over a month now, we're cutting into that 260 day period of acceleration. We're now maybe at the 230 day rate of acceleration at this point in the cycle. So if we continue to consolidate and reaccumulate throughout this reaccumulation range, which could last still up to five months, then if we were to cut into that 230 day rate of acceleration that we're seeing right now, more than a 150 day period cutting into that, that would still mean that we're going to accelerate by a fair amount. It would be much less, of course, 
it would still be maybe around three months of acceleration, which is why to really deepen or really cut into that acceleration and, and see Bitcoin decelerate considerably in this already accelerated cycle, maybe it needs to reaccumulate here longer than 150 50 days. Maybe it has to reaccumulate up to 200 days, maybe even a little bit longer than that to really get the cycle resynchronized with historical norms. Could a 200 day plus reaccumulation range develop here? That would be ideal for the health of this cycle, but it still is an accelerated cycle at the moment and we'd need to see a tremendous feat of acceleration deceleration for us to get resynchronized. So how likely is that? Well, if we were to look at previous cycles, for example, we saw a 60 day, or at least this earlier in this cycle, we saw a 60 day consolidation right over here, which based on historical cycles, well, that was a period of underperformance. If we look at 2016, for example, from the bear market bottom, it also saw a sideways range at highs, but it wasn't that long. So this was also technical underperformance in some way, but then we saw overperformance in the market. Whether, whereas this was underperformance for two months at a time. And then of course this was overperformance. So my point here is that Bitcoin tends to enter periods of underperformance and then overperformance and then underperformance and then overperformance once again. So this is now a period, a much needed period of underperformance in the sense that Bitcoin now needs to mean revert and decelerate in this cycle. We've seen a period of underperformance in this cycle before. Could we see a similar range play out in this post halving period, you can see that if we were to just do a copy paste scenario in this post halving period, this is exactly the sort of situation that Bitcoin may need a extended range like that into the future. So in fact, this probably wasn't 60 days. Apologies, I just checked this and this is a 224 day range, which makes total sense because if we were to copy paste this and put this just after the halving, it would totally make sense. This would be an ideal range, maybe even less than that so that we completely resynchronize with the halving cycle. But generally speaking, this would be an ideal range for Bitcoin to essentially replicate in this post halving period, because that would mean that not only do we go beyond the typical 100, 150 day reaccumulation period after the halving, but that would also mean that we're going to cut into that rate of acceleration that we're currently seeing by, well, pretty much zeroing that rate of acceleration. And that would tie into a normal bull market peak in September, October 2025. So this sort of replication of this range, we've seen it before, of course, we've seen this in a, in a year, the 2023 year, in a year where we didn't have these two massive cycles come into play, the ETFs and the halving. So that's a very different catalyst based view on whether or not we can replicate this range in the post halving period. But just technically speaking, we've seen this happen before and a replication of this range would be ideal in diminishing that rate of acceleration that we're currently seeing in the cycle. So it would, that's essentially what we need. We need the longest ever post having reaccumulation of all time to get over this rate of accumulation that we, rate of acceleration that we saw in the pre having period get us to new all time highs in the pre halving period for the very first time ever. So we've seen a once in a lifetime feat be performed in the pre halving period. Maybe we need to see a once in a lifetime feat get performed in the post halving period for this current cycle to resynchronize with historical norms and with the regular halving cycle that we've seen to date. 
Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Like this video if you enjoy content like this going forward. I'm Rex Capital and I'll speak to you in the next one. Speak to you soon.